Hey there, it's Izzy here again. I've been really excited about this new workflow that I mentioned in a recent email where I'm creating animated 3D logo reveals, like what you see on the screen in front of you. And this is something that I have in Final Cut Pro. I can just drag it into a project and swap out the logo with whatever logo or image that I want. And so what I wanna do in this video is just give you a general overview of my workflow so you can see the process I go through in order to create one of these 3D animations like this. Okay, so the first thing is I start in Cinema 4D. So this is Cinema 4D. It's a professional 3D application. It's definitely, well, it's probably not for hobbyists because it's a pretty expensive piece of software. So it really makes sense for folks that are making money, you know, professionals that are uh, need a tool like this for the projects that they're working on. But the reason I start in Cinema 4D and the reason I pay for the software is because it has these tools called MoGraph tools, like cloners and stuff like that, that make it really easy to create animations like this. So what I'll do is I'll just hit play, and you can see this is a just a real quick simulation of what that looks like. And I'll let it keep playing there, and then I'll kind of orbit around, and you can see a placeholder there. So this animation is something I could technically make in Blender using animation nodes, but it's not its not very consistent. It's not very reliable to use animation nodes, unfortunately. And because I need this to be reliable for these projects I'm working on, I went ahead and invested in Cinema 4D. Okay, so what I do is I start in Cinema 4D, I use these great MoGraph tools. Then what I do is I bring the project into Blender. So let me close down Cinema 4D, and I'm not gonna save it. I'll bring this into Blender here, and I'll, I'll just open up the Blender project. I won't go through the whole process of bringing it in. Okay, and so here is the same project in Blender, and what I've done is I've used the, the same scene with the same animation, but then what I did is I added a drop zone surface there, and now this is not an actual drop zone that could be replaced in Final Cut Pro yet, so what I have to do is add the materials and add the camera and get this the way I want it, and then you can see here's where this is at right here. It's not playing at a very fast frame rate, probably because I am recording the screen at the same time. So it's playing in slow motion here. But you can see here is the animation, okay? So I add the lights and the camera and add the materials. And then when it's all done, I render this out. And that is a long, long process. It takes a long time to render a 4K sequence like this. So I do make these in 4K. All right, so now then out of Blender, I'm gonna go ahead and quit out of Blender. The next step is I go into motion, but I'm going to start in Final Cut Pro and I'll show you this really quick. Here I am in Final Cut Pro and what I'm going to do is I'm going to control click on this project and choose open in motion so you can see this part of the process. So this is the project and it's opened in motion now. So here's what I use motion to do. What I do is I take motion and I replace the image that's in there with a custom drop zone placeholder image. And then I go through and if I go to the project layer in the inspector, you can see I've published a color tint and I've published all the parameters for the drop zone and the panning in the drop zone and the scaling in the drop zone. So all of that is available in Final Cut Pro. So the animation is already baked. It's already a rendered animation. And then this is going to be something that's replaceable in Final Cut Pro. So now what I'll do is I'll close out of this and I've got this project set up already. I'm just gonna click and drag and bring this into the project. And it's gonna ask me what I want the dimensions to be. I'm gonna choose a 720p project, but I'm gonna make it 60 frames a second. So this, these animations support up to 4K at 60 frames a second. So they're pretty big files. I'm gonna click OK. I'll hit Shift Z to zoom to fit so I can see my whole timeline and I'll move the playhead towards the end. And then let's go into the library and into the logos event. And then let's take this logo and put it inside the drop zone. So what I do is I put the playhead where I want to see the image. And then I just click on the template here, click on the drop zone well inside the inspector, click on that. And then I can go here and just click anywhere on this image. And you can see by, by default, it doesn't really fit. This image is pretty big. And so that's why we have this ability to scale. So for example, if I just click and drag and bring it down like that, I'll just go to 68%, something like that, and click apply clip. Another thing I can do is change the color. So let's say I don't like this kind of peach color. So I can just click here and very easily change the tint. In fact, for this one, I really like kind of a monochrome, light, white, grayish type of a look. So I'll just leave it on that. There we go. And you can pan it around and scale it and that sort of thing. So now that's how easy it was for me to add that image, that logo to this animation. And so now what I could do is render this out and put it at the beginning of a video, for example, if I just want to reveal my logo before the full video shows, maybe on YouTube or whatever, this is a way that you can do it very easily. Okay, so now let's play through it. We can see what the final animation looks like. I'll hit play. 
and there we go. So you can see it's got the logo in there. And one of the things I really like, this may not be just readily apparent, but if you look at it, you can see there's actually a shadow on the logo image itself up here at the top and then also around the edge. And it really makes it so it looks integrated into the scene. And so you can see like there's some depth here. You can see some depth where the logo is integrated nicely. And so you see the shadow that's being cast there. I really like that. Let's replace this with this, your logo here image. So what I'll do is I'll just click on this again. And this time I'll click on the your logo here and then click apply clip. And now I've swapped it out for a different logo, right? So you can replace that drop zone with any photo or any video clip or any logo image, for example. Isn't that interesting? So the workflow basically starts in Cinema 4D to create the effect that's really easy to create in Cinema 4D. Then I bring it into Blender to do the things that are easy for me to do in Blender. And then I bring it into Motion to create drop zones. And then I bring it into Final Cut Pro where it shows up in the generators browser and I can just drag it into projects and replace the logo or the drop zone with any logo or image or video clip. I think this is a really cool process. It's sort of like an assembly line for me where you just move it from one stage to the next one until finally you have a finished animation where you can put your logo in. Anyway, I've been creating all kinds of these animations. I'm excited to show them to you, but that's the overview of the process of how I create it. Now, this isn't really supposed to be a detailed step-by-step -step workflow video to show you all the details of how to get from one place to another one. It's not really like that. That'd be super long. This is just a general overview, a big picture of the process. And hopefully you found the information in this video helpful. Thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.